Hello everyone, I am Sushil Kumar from MBA International Business, Delhi School of Economics. In this episode of SIB Diaries, today with us, one Satyarthi and Nivedita Singh, who just completed their summer internship at Invest India. So, hi Nivedita, hi Vans. Hi. So, how are you doing? Um, we are doing great. It's a Saturday. It's India versus Pakistan, and we are here. So, yeah. <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> Not that great. <laughs> no, no, no. We are very excited to be here. Okay. So, you guys, uh, you both did your internship at Invest India. So, how? What was your role and responsibility there? So I interned with the data and research team. So I was a data analyst intern and the data team at Invest India basically works in conjunction with the one district, one product team and the startup India team. Okay, that sounds interesting. And what about you? Okay, so to understand my role, we need to understand uh, how Invest India is structured. So uh, Invest India has multiple offices across Delhi and it has MOU signed with different ministries for example with the tourism ministry as well as IU sector so my uh, office focused on the IU sector of the government of India and my office as well was based out of the ministry of Ayush in Delhi so my team was called the Ayush desk at Invest India and it revolved around uh, bringing in investments uh, focusing on the IU sector of India IUC is currently a growing sector in India too. So we'll move on with the next questions. So first question will be, what was the process of applying and getting selected in, in Invest India? So um, it's, you have to apply on the website. So firstly, you have to make a document and it can be on any project that is undergoing in India at this point of time and you have to basically explain why investors should invest in that particular project so you have to uh, highlight the KIPs of KPIs of that particular project and uh, you have to factor in all the different dimensions so I made the project on Gift City in India which is the Gujarat uh, inter financial tech city and uh, yeah and then there you have to submit that project and then you get a call within 10 to 20 days from the Invest India office and then they uh, schedule your interview with any particular desk or team and then you have to clear that interview and then you basically get the opportunity however I would like to highlight that I actually got my internship through cold messages on LinkedIn so I did also apply on website but uh, the one that I actually ended up converting was via LinkedIn so I would suggest to all the juniors and everybody that um, along with the website thing you should also start pitching yourself on LinkedIn because a lot of people a lot of interns at Invest India actually end up getting their internship opportunity via LinkedIn what about you so uh, I think Nivedita has pretty much summed it up uh, about uh, the selection process uh, my uh, my selection process was solely through their portal I applied on the portal and my uh, case study was based on a food and beverage company which was supposed to enter India and expand their market market so uh, in addition to what Nivedita just mentioned I would also like to highlight that um, I mean I would second her on that uh, the intern that joined up uh, after I joined uh, Invest India uh, there were two interns and both of them uh, got the opportunity through cold emailing and cold messaging as well so I think that is one of the most important aspects in addition to of course applying on the official portal if someone is in Delhi can they apply offline too um, no, you have to make the the process is online, so you have to either submit the document uh, on their portal or you have to send cold messages and of course you have to be present in Delhi to intern at Invest India. That is completely offline. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so we'll move on to next question. Uh, so, what is your motivated you to choose this particular internship? I'm glad you asked me this question. So. From the moment that I had joined DSC, I had targeted that this is the organization that I want to intern at and it all started uh, at the induction of the consulting and strategy cell. So a lot of my seniors, I am also a part of that and a lot of my seniors, actually all of them had actually interned and invested in there. And I was very intrigued by their experiences of working with joint secretary and bureaucrats and creating basically impact in the society. So that is something that I had actually kept my eye on. I knew that I want to work in the public sector. 
uh, so I so I was very hell bent on this and I was very sure that this is what I want to do. Sounds good. Uh, one spot about you. What motivated you to choose this particular um, A similar experience uh, on the similar lines how Nivedita mentioned it. Uh, I also consulted the same guys to know their experience of working at Invest India. And secondly, uh, during uh, my research about the company, I found out that the kind of people you interact with, you work with at Invest India are very knowledgeable. I mean, they are graduates and postgraduates from some of the most prestigious institutions of India, even foreign institutions as well. So, you know, the learning curve, the exposure was uh, bound to be very upwards. So that is what motivated me to apply at Invest India. So once, can you describe your typical day in summer internship? What was the day, your day like? Okay, so uh, the office where I worked, uh, the Ayush desk, it was supposed to be a five-day working office. So uh, the reason why uh, the kind of work that we undertook was, you know, something that required physical presence in the office. So neither did, uh, I mean, post-COVID as well. Uh, I got to know that uh, my team was one of those teams which very quickly went from working hybrid or even work from home to uh, physical uh, office days. So uh, the, uh, again to explain further, day-to-day um, -day activities included collaborating with senior officials which include directors, secretaries, joint secretaries, I mean to help them on day-to-day -day, uh, basis for maybe uh, meetings, uh, uh, writing strategic reports and uh, indulging in discussions and again, uh, there are uh, some projects that come directly from the Prime Minister's office. For example, one project I worked upon was, uh, it focused on the International Day of Yoga and that is something that requires a uh, very quick adaptation. So for that you uh, require physical presence in the office and I mean to sum it up, the office timings were uh, typical for me as well, uh, exactly what a full-time employee works at. So it was from 10 to 5, of course it is flexible based on the uh, kind of work you have on that day. Okay, so Nivedita, what was one of the projects that you worked on, can you explain it? Sure, so uh, I worked on the HSN code project which was with the ODOP team. So HS codes are basically used for product classification. Um, so my, the gist of my project is how an 8 digit HS code can basically elevate the fortune of one district in India. Um, so there are a lot, so one of the characteristics of the ODFB products is that they are very localized. They are not standardized. So by granting them the HS codes and including them in product classification, we would basically be standardizing the quality and therefore be opening up all the barriers that these products currently face. Uh, let's say the SPS measures which are imposed on a lot of Indian food products. So we are basically enhancing the quality and, and also um, associating them with the GI tags. So there is this success story of uh, Lakadong Haldi in Northeast. It was one of the products which has a very good curcumin content and therefore commands a lot of price in the international markets. But due to lack of awareness, the farmers did not even know about it and they were not uh, growing it on an area on which they should have. They were growing other varieties of Haldi. Uh, but after it was granted with the GI tag, there has been a transformational change in the cultivation of that particular haldi and it was for the first time in 2021 that that particular haldi was exported and that has basically transformed the fortune of all the farmers. People who were earning thousands are now making lakhs. So that's the power which HS codes and which GI tags gives to such people and that's how you, you, you cannot think that an 8 digit HS code can basically change the life of a person. So yeah, it was a very, I would say, very transformational project. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Uh, like, what is HS code in GI tags? For our audience, I love uh, that. Yes. Okay, <laughs> HS codes are harmonized systems, so this is basically uh, made by the World Trade Organization. It is uniform in all the countries, so in the international arena it's a 6 digit code, however it is extendable up to 10, digit, 10 digit, digits, so in India we follow a 8 digit HS code. So um, to give an example, let's say the first two digits are 
for the chapter so let's say um, we are talking about beverages so the first two codes are for the beverages the next two would be let's say would give uh, the identification of coffee or tea the next two would be what kind of raw coffee it is is it roasted um, and more varieties it is arabica it is a or and the next two could be could um, be linked to the geographical location of that particular coffee so that's how you classify a product so a single code can define everything about that product exactly a single code can tell you what product it is what category it is coming from what is the geographical location of that so it also helps to create credibility in the international market because there are, there is a lot of parallel trade um, when it comes to let's say a lot of pricey products um, like you like there could be there is something called authentic banarasi silk but there is also a lot of people who would be selling uh, products and they would be calling it banarasi silk although it would not be of the same quality so if you have hs code and gi tag which is inclined to a particular product it helps to establish authenticity okay once like we just uh, heard about an audience learned about hs code okay so what was one of the projects that you worked on can you explain a bit okay so uh, one of the uh, i think uh, this is something uh, that comes personally uh, one of the projects i collaborated on was with the assistant <coughs> assistant vice president of invest india so uh, uh, basically the project revolved around uh, creating a comprehensive benchmarking of countries around the world across across continents uh, to highlight uh, the importance and the market access routes of how someone would go about investing in that particular country so the project revolved uh, around creating a market access route and doing basic to even advance uh, market research about maybe what are the compliances that they need to follow what could be potential uh, barrier uh, to uh, to investing in that country or maybe how is the competitive space and the kind of import and export rates that they might come across so that is something was that was very enriching uh, uh, solely because i got to collaborate with the assistant vice president and you know these are kind of people who are uh, very knowledgeable i mean they when you communicate with them they open up a wholly new perspective into how you should think about things so that was one of the biggest slides during my internship okay that i think that's what invest india is about as you both explained and talked about your project that simplifying and eliminating the barriers in businesses hmm. okay so can you guys share any memorable moments or experiences that you had during internship sure so can i go first ah please please so it was our first day at invest india and uh, once and i was very punctual so at 9 am in the morning we are there and um, our office uh, so on first day once also had to come to the main invest india office which was at vigyan bhavan and um, you know there's a lot of security there so you have to first um, get a receipt so firstly you have to make a call to the office then the office confirms yes these are our interns and then they send the confirmation downstairs and then a um, a receipt is printed on which uh, they take your live photograph and everything so um, we went and at 9 am so the office timings on google were 9 am and we did not know that actually at 9 am no one comes so it's only the security guard who is upstairs and uh, so the guy who is downstairs he made a call to the office and the security guard picked up and uh, the security guard had to send a confirmation so he sent a, so we um, we told him our names that vansh uh, nivedita we are interns and we are joining today he sent the receipt and on the receipt it he had written vansh as vans o n c e and i think my name was also uh, very very misspelled i think it was nandita or something but not as much as once par itni jaldi ja ke subah akele akele kaisa laga day one tha na day one tha hum punctual the pehla din tha hame lagta hai jaldi jaate hain next day se we also became thoda sarkari aapke liye same tha so my take on this Uh, it was her office right so she was supposed to work out of that office but my office was different 
so it is so it has been close to one and a half two hours and we are sitting in the cafeteria waiting for our respective reporting managers to come to us and she gets a call from her manager and my manager texts me that where are you so i tell him that i am at vigyan bhavan office and he said you're not supposed to be there you're supposed to be at the different office of invest india so thankfully it uh, my first day was not my last day at invest india <laughs> so he was understanding of the situation and he asked me he gave me directions as well so in that regard he was very helpful as well people are cooperative thankfully thankfully yes okay so moving on can you guys provide some tips for gd and interview um for interview i would say that what you how you speak is more important than what you speak so you have to be very very confident and you should have a great presence of mind so any question can be thrown at you and you just have to maintain your calm and uh, usually people get very fussed up whenever they when they whenever a question is thrown at them and they do not know the answer but um, i would say that you know somehow even if you don't know the correct answer you can always think about that question take your time ask the interviewer can i take 10 20 seconds think about it and i am sure that you would land up with an answer which would be close to the correct answer so from your experiences and your learnings you would be able to come up with something relevant and that is what the interviewer is looking for they are not always looking for the right answer they are looking at the way how you are handling the questions how you are able to handle the situations because even at your job um you you're not supposed to know everything and there would be times when you wouldn't know anything so it's about learning and it's about having a great presence of mind and maintaining your calm so i would say yeah always be confident always have a smile on your face and be very very polite to the interviewer maybe so once uh how can someone gain maximum out of an internship okay so uh, generally an internship is for 2 to 3 months right so personally the location should not be a constraint first and uh, how i went about my internship is that i gave uh, my everything to that internship in terms of even being in the office for 5 days right so that is something that people who are interning do not like so i think even if you're asked to come to office 5 days a week uh, that would be very advantageous to you because you would be in place in office physically right so you get to interact with a lot of people and that is something that helps to develop your personality you uh, you get to know how to talk to people how to convince them even at times so that is one learning that i got and um, secondly um, if you are a fresher uh, do not restrict yourself to one particular industry apply at different internships and it in the end it would not matter much because you are a fresher right so their uh, specialization does not apply to you so that is second according to that we have to explore our opportunities definitely thank you so much for sparing your time especially on saturday morning it was lovely interacting with you all nice start hone wala yaar <laughs> definitely thank you so much for watching stay tuned pr convener kab aa rahe hai so guys like share subscribe kar hi lo